Let's see how to serve PHP files with Nginx. Let's start by updating our package list. And now, let's install PHP FPM and Nginx. The PHP FPM package, as opposed to the standard PHP package, is the recommended way to work with PHP when using Nginx. Once this is done, we can check the server's IP address and use our web browser to visit it. And we see the Nginx default welcome page. Let's now navigate to var whtml, which is the folder that contains the served files. If we list the files here, we can see the default HTML page that's currently displayed on the browser. I want to replace it with a PHP file. So let's remove the HTML file, and instead of it, let's create a new index.php file. This is going to be the simplest program possible, with nothing but a call to PHP info. Let's save the file and try to refresh our web browser. And we see that we now get 403 forbidden. Let's fix it. First, let's take a look at var run PHP. If we list the files here, we can see among them a sock file. This file is a Unix socket used for communication between the web server and the PHP FPM service. And it's crucial to take notice of the specific version that's installed in our system. So in my case, it's version 8.1. Let's keep that in mind. Now, let's navigate to etc. Engine X sites available, which is where the Engine X configuration is saved. Here, we only have one configuration file called default. We can use another file for our configuration, but I'll just replace this one. So let's remove the one we currently have and create a new default file instead. Here, I'm just going to paste the configuration needed to support PHP files in Nginx, and you can just copy it from the description box of this video. It doesn't contain too much. It lists the port engine X will listen to, then the root folder for the files that will be served, the name of the files that might be served if the user only navigates to the folder, then we have the first location, which handles non-PHP files, such as HTML and CSS files, and basically tries to return the file and returns 404 if it fails. We then have the second location, and this is where we take care of access requests to PHP files. The PHP files are recognized by their extension, and for these files, we first need to include a configuration file, then we use fast CGI pass to pass these files to the socket we talked about before. As we said, this socket is in charge of the communication between the web server and the PHP FPM service. So we basically pass the request to PHP FPM. Notice that the version of PHP needs to be corrected in the snippet I just pasted. So as you might remember, we found that the socket in my machine is 8.1. So let's replace 7.x with 8.1. And then we also need to define the script file name parameter which is just a concatenation of the root folder and the name of the file. And we also include fast CGI params. Let's save this file. And now we need to restart our engine X service. This can be done with the systemctl restart command. And if we refresh our web browser now, we can see that our PHP code was successfully handled.